In this lesson, we are gonna create our very own virtual gallery. Learn to present your artwork like a pro. Spark the imagination of your clients by showing them just how beautiful your images look on the wall. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars at the print lab. In fact, you don't need to spend any money at all because our gallery comes in at the low, low price of absolutely free. All you need is your camera and a little bit of imagination. Greetings friends and welcome to our virtual gallery. Now, as you probably know, printing your artwork in the real world can get very expensive. So if you are an artist or a photographer looking to showcase your work to your clientele, the best way to do so is in a virtual gallery, just like this one. See, these pictures, they're not really here. And here's the best part. This is actually really easy to do. So in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to create your own virtual gallery. So you love photography. You have a portfolio of really nice images, and now it's time to share them with the world. Sure, you have Instagram and Facebook like everybody else, but now it's time to step things up a bit and show your audience just how beautiful your images can look in the context of real life art. Let's see what happens when we put you, the artist, in a room with your photography. I'm willing to bet it's gonna look pretty good on you. In order to pull this off, we are going to need three things. One, the environment two, the artist, and three, a nice set of virtual images. So let's get started. First and foremost, we need to sort out our environment. All you really need is a large empty wall. This could be the side of your house, the side of your garage, the side of literally any building. This entire lesson was shot in front of an office building here in my hometown of Colorado Springs. I tend to gravitate towards neutral colors. In this case, the gray wall is both classic and simple. You can put virtually any color palette in front of it and it will not clash with you or your artwork. And now it's time to put the artist into the gallery. All right, essentially, all we're doing here is just taking a self-portrait. Now, I don't have super fancy eye autofocus detection on my cameras. I use really old cameras, that's okay. I typically set up a tripod that I can get focus on using the camera that you're looking through right now. That enables me to make sure I have critical focus when I'm doing a self-portrait. I typically like to run my portraits at about 50 to 70 millimeters. It's kind of the most flattering section of the lens for shooting pictures of people. So that gets you a good start. Try to fill the entire frame with this gray wall or whatever your backdrop is. You want it to be kind of like full framed and neutral for the most part. And so essentially all we're gonna do is move this tripod out of the way and put our primary camera on an interval timer so that it just shoots one picture every two seconds and I'll just kind of stand here and pretend to get my picture made. And after the first five minutes or so, you have a bunch of pictures to go through, which should probably get you 90% of the way there. It's also good to practice shooting pictures of yourself because if you're the type of photographer who is always behind the lens, that's not really a healthy relationship with the camera. You wanna be able to get the experience of being on the other side of the lens so that you can better communicate with your subject when you're shooting portraits of other people. Shooting portraits of yourself is a great way to become a more well-rounded photographer. So try to have fun with it. As that interval timer is clicking away, think of something that makes you happy. Flash a winning smile, look friendly and engaging. You want your audience to feel welcome when they see you. Present yourself as a nice person, send a little positive energy out into the universe and good things will always come back around. Once I have a series of self-portraits that I'm happy with, I always shoot additional images of the blank wall. This is very important because it gives us a lot of flexibility when it comes to scaling up our environment. We need wall space for all that beautiful artwork, and a blank canvas goes a long way towards creating a versatile gallery space. All right, now that we have set the stage, it's time to start placing artwork onto the walls. Now, I'm a little old-fashioned, and I love to see a photograph in a nice frame. The trouble with frames is that they are typically the most expensive component to hanging your art. And in the interest of keeping our project at a tidy sum of zero dollars, we are going to stock our virtual gallery with virtual frames. So here's what you gotta do. Go out into your backyard and snap a picture of a tree. All right, so once you have a picture of your tree, we're gonna take this baby into Photoshop and do a little magic. So step one, I've got my original file over here and I've got a white backdrop. I'm just gonna grab the marquee tool and I'm gonna take a slice out of the middle of this tree. Command J, that gives me a quick little 
slice of tree. Next, we're going to go to filter. Let's go to our blur gallery, and I'm going to use a motion blur to give this a little bit of interesting kind of texture. So I'm just gonna move this guy so that it's 90 degrees, so that it's kind of going with the grain of the bark. That looks pretty good right there. We'll click OK. And once again, I'm gonna take another slice right out of the middle here. So Command J, and let's look at this. I'm gonna take this guy and stretch him out. He's kind of starting to look like a picture frame to me. Let's roll him over in this direction here. And as you can see, this sort of section right through the middle here is definitely starting to look like a picture frame. So let's grab a copy of that. Just gonna go through here. Once again, let's do a Command J. And when we stretch this guy out, let's zoom out a little bit. He is definitely starting to look more like a picture frame. All right, that's pretty good. I don't really want to have a wooden frame. I'd kind of rather have more of a kind of a black onyx frame. So let's take this guy. We'll run a quick little black and white. That looks good. Bring some of our colors down so that it just gets nice and dark. I like a nice black frame. That's pretty cool right there. I'm going to merge these two guys together. So I now just have a black frame. And when I grab my lasso tool, let's cut some 45 degree angles on the edge of our frame. And so pretty much just like that, out of a tree, we've created a picture frame. Let's go ahead and copy this guy, remove him down, flip him around. And as you can see, once you have your pieces made, you can make pretty much any size and shape frame that you want to fit any piece of artwork that you want to fit in there. So let's go ahead and give this a mat. I like a nice mat for my frame. And I'm just going to kind of cut a hole in my mat so that it just sort of looks like a mat for a picture frame. And we delete the center of our mat and now we have a frame with a mat. Let's throw some artwork in here. Got another beautiful piece that we shot recently of our majestic maroon bells here in amazing Colorado. Let's copy that piece. Come back over here. I'm going to paste it in underneath the mat and voila. And let's just kind of scale him down a little bit so he more or less fits inside this picture frame. And just like that, with a few quick, easy steps, we have created a virtual piece of artwork to go in our virtual gallery. I'm going to go ahead and kind of mask off this mountain here so it's not sticking out the edges. Do a quick mask and just like that we have created a virtual piece of artwork so we can hang this in any gallery that we want i personally think that it'll probably look pretty good on our plain gray wall what do you think once we have a series of virtual images to place in our virtual gallery this is where the fun part starts you can mix and match all kinds of combinations. Again, we're gonna use Photoshop to place our images onto the walls. Once the frames are created, it's just a matter of selecting your favorite artwork. From here, you can design pretty much any theme you want. You worked hard shooting these images, traveling, getting up before sunrise, hiking for miles. There's a lot that goes into a photography portfolio and your images deserve better. Getting to see yourself surrounded by all of your artwork is actually very satisfying. I love building these galleries. It helps to add an extra layer of complexity, an extra layer of depth to your work. Now, before we wrap this up, we need to take a minute to talk ethics. I get asked this question a lot. When you build a virtual gallery, are you lying to your audience? Are you being insincere by showing them something that is not real? The answer is no, you're not lying. You are merely helping to assist your viewer's imagination. Photographers build composites all the time to help their clients envision a piece of artwork on the wall. And if someone asks you if this is real, simply tell them the truth. Yeah, this is a virtual gallery. I created everything right outside my house. Funny story, I actually created a picture frame out of a tree. Take pride in your creative work. You went the extra mile. Don't be afraid to share your experience with others. In short, the virtual gallery is not meant to deceive, but rather to inspire, to help bring your vision to life. And who knows, maybe someday all that hard work will pay off. And you might just be standing in a real gallery surrounded by all of your amazing images. Until then, here's to the imagination. All right, friends, as always, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had fun on our little photography adventure. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We have a lot of cool new stuff coming up and I don't want you to miss out. All right, that's gonna do it for this time. We'll see you in the next lesson.